What popular sayings are actually bullsh? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. F. The older I get, the more I wish it were that simple. It will keep the doctor away forever if you can throw it hard enough. The past year it has been we're in this together. If anything it's been one of the most every man for himself times I've ever witnessed. During these unprecedented times. Love is never having to say you're sorry. I think from the movie. Love Story. Stupid and Ridiculous. Said by Tyrion O'Neill in Love Story. In What's Up Doc. Barbara Streisand quotes is the line to Ryan at the end and he replies. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Never having to say you are sorry is walking on eggshells. The lightning never strikes twice in the same spot. Yes, it does. Especially if that spot is a high metal structure. It will be struck twice. Even more than just two times. The Empire State Building gets struck by lightning between 25 and 100 times every year. Without a lightning rod, these strikes would ground themselves through the building's wiring. Or through the people working on one of its 103 floors. Causing untold amounts of damage. Is the lightning rod something that was considered during the building process or added after the fact? Finish what you started. No. Sometimes the thing I started was a bad idea and maybe I should do something I like better. That'll buff right out. I say that ironically these days. For anything that clearly can't be buffed out. Sleep like a baby. A more accurate description for it would be pissed the bed twice and woke up screaming. Should be sleep like a cat because my cat has this sh down to a T. So I do sleep like a baby. I think a tired adult sleeps more deeply than a baby ever can. If you keep doing that son. You will go blind. Dad, I'm over here. Hi over here. I'm dad. Good thing that's not true. Continues poking eyeball with a fork. You can't prove nothing the sun never hurt no one. The rare quadruple negative in its natural environment. Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Well, I do what I love and I'm an unemployed alcoholic. Somehow, I don't think whoever said that first had this in mind. It sounds like the saying applies in your situation though. People only use 10% of their brains. Some of the people I've met have me believing that sometimes. Teacher of mine have a good metaphor to illustrate the nonsense. He said areas of the brain not being all stimulated at the same time might sound like a non-optimal way of using a machine. But now take a traffic light. We can say I works one stroke three of its capacity at time. One color represents a signal. And if it worked 100% all the time, putting all the colors at once, you agree it could be very dangerous for the traffic, right? It's like the telephone game. I think it started with only 10% of people use their brains. Only brains use 10% of their people. Pass it on. Alternatively, that person is so smart, they must have a really large brain. I've recently started replying to that newborns have 2x more neurons than adults. I don't know I see a lot of people on our Insanepia Plafasa book who don't even use 5% of their brains. Cheaters never win. They often do. Doesn't mean cheating should be encouraged though. Happy wife happy life. Both people need to be happy in a relationship. Happy spouse happy house. Ironically, the original saying did mean both people need to be happy in a relationship. It was first seen in a British paper in 1903, which is 25 years before women were granted full and equal voting rights in that country. So at the time, a wife was a second class citizen who served to make her husband happy as the king of his castle. The saying pointed out that conceding some comfort or choices to a woman meant she was happier, and therefore more pleasant for the man to be around, making him happier too. It looks like a statement of female entitlement now. But originally the opposite was true. Happy spouse happy house means we've come a long way. I before e except after c. Or when sounded like a as in neighbor and way. I before e except when your foreign neighbor Keith receives 8 counterfeit beige slays from feisty caffeinated weightlifters. Weird huh. And on weekends and holidays and all throughout May. Good things happen to those who wait. Good things happen to those who are patient. Still gotta put in the work. But can't be trying to rush everything this i've been waiting for a long time and not a single car has run me over cars are scared of you basically as has been pointed out many of the common sayings we use only use part of the actual idiom my personal cringe inducing one is great minds think alike though fools seldom differ the second half means the exact opposite of just saying great minds think alike this seems to be the case with a lot of our usage 
Do you have other ones? I like that saying now. Come to think of it I probably did hear the second half a long time ago but not in ages. Another one that often gets used is a few bad apples spoil the bunch. It often gets used as an excuse for bad people in a field not facing consequences. Another is it is better to be feared than loved if you cannot be both. My country. Right or wrong. If right to be kept right. If wrong. To be set right. A jack of all trades is a master of none. But oftentimes better than a master of one. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. But too much absence makes it wander. Money can't buy happiness. The saying itself is true enough it's about greed and it is meant to mean that however much wealth you have you can't buy your way to happiness. Being a millionaire, or a billionaire won't necessarily make you happy. However, people badly misuse it almost as a refrain for those who are destitute as if they don't deserve any more and it won't make them happy. It's that which is utter bullsh. Because, being able to afford healthcare, to feed your family, a roof over your head and to not every day have annoying, desperate anxiety and unending stress about whether you can afford to live each week will make someone a ref ton happier than the alternative. And that's nothing to do with greed. Money can't buy happiness, but it can pay off a lot of sadness. This is the proper way to look at it. Sure, money doesn't magically make you happy, but not having crushing debt will definitely make you less stressed at minimum. Money can't buy happiness. Me and my antidepressant bills would beg to differ. Crime doesn't pay. The least you get out of it is room and board for a set time. White collar crime pays extremely well and is almost never punished. Yeah bank executive who embezzled 10 million dollar sentence to 3 years prison. B. That's a pretty good salary. If you owe the bank 100k, it's your problem. If you owe the bank 100 billions, it's the bank's problem. Then the banks make it the taxpayer's problem. It takes two to fight. Not if someone is intent on bullying harassing someone else. The policy where both people are punished is grossly unfair. Yeah, whoever first said this never lived with a volatile personality, or they were the one to start fights. As a child, I heard in my home doctors and ambulance men say, MRS, Stuart, you must have done something to provoke him. MRS, Stuart, it takes two to make an argument. Wrong, wrong. My mother did nothing to provoke that and even if she had, violence is never, ever a choice that a man should make. Ever. Sir Patrick Stewart, discussing his mother's abuse from his father. Turn your hobby into a career. If you work with your hobby, you won't have a hobby anymore. Ask, almost, any professional gamer. Feeling a sense of satisfaction, enjoyment and accomplishment in your career however, that's worth striving for. It's why everyone takes up golf, and the pro golfers go fishing, or have sex with everyone, or both. Works for some people. Did video game QA for 13 years and was quite happy doing it. From what I've read it involves a whole ton of doing the same things over and over and over. For hours on end. With no set schedule. Until you find a glitch or error or something. That's quite the patience you have if that's true. The customer is always right. Any customer service job I had never said that. They said the customer is king. Which means they can be an idiot but get whatever they want anyway. Well I know that. Blah blah blah. I'm sorry. That's not correct. The policy is. Blah. What happened to the customer is always right. Obviously I don't have an answer for that. At least not one I can give you. But it's stupid to think that just because you're a customer you can demand anything you want and we have to do it. You're also far from the first person to threaten to sue us or get me fired and I'm sure you won't be the last. But if it makes you more comfortable I can point you to where we publicly list all of our policies so you can review them with the lawyer you claim to have hired. Or in the case I had, here's your change. Customer drops change deliberately. Why are you throwing your change at me? I didn't. You saying I did that on purpose? Are you? Come on. I'm the customer. Are you? No. You dropped it. Right. I'll be fine waiting for you after your shift. In matters of taste. People leave that part off just like they leave off the spoil the bunch with regard to a few bad apples. Or how pulling yourself up by your bootstraps is a saying to illustrate an impossible task. I work in it. Here the customer is always a moron. Ah. The old stalwart error codes. Picnic problem and chair. Not in computer. And my favorite. The ID 10T error. The worst mistake I have made while working help desk was trying to explain to a woman why she couldn't get into her email quarantine folder. 
the client used a service called email laundry and their server was down, or more specifically there was an ice outage in the area of England where the servers which hosted the service resided in. Her exact words were so insert MSP is just effing outsourcing ours to India. Then, bruh, no. Every time you log into office to be about why things look wrong you're accessing a mailbox that's hosted on Microsoft's Shout in Seattle or wherever. That's just how SAH works. Everything happens for a reason. Karma will get them. Lots of terrible people out there will live out their lives in a comfort I could only dream of and a lot of good people will suffer pains and heartaches they don't deserve. The universe cares not. Nobody is keeping score. Sometimes I wonder if the phrase, he will pay for it in the afterlife, is just a way to pacify a person's sense of justice. Hate this bullsh. It compels people to victim blame and never hold wrongdoers accountable. My relatives said it all the time when I was molested as a kid. It was either my fault my destiny or my karma for being hurt and that I should leave it up to God their destiny to punish them for their actions. It's just a fancy way of saying I'm too weak lazy to be held responsible. It makes me so angry. My Christian great grandmother still talks to the person who molested and abused me my entire childhood and even brought my young sister around him once I was effing livid. It's almost as if he did nothing to me and we should love our neighbors as ourselves in forgiveness or some sh. It's also an excuse to do nothing. I'm gonna make no effort to improve things because if it's meant to be it's meant to be. Very frustrating watching people float aimlessly in easily solved misery. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Only one way to find out. What doesn't kill you will only try again. That landmine that took your senses arms legs etc yeah you'll get stronger from THST. Darkness imprisoning me. All that I see. Absolute horror. I cannot live. I cannot die. Trapped in myself. Body my holding cell. Landmine has taken my sight. Taken my speech. Taken my hearing. Taken my arms. Taken my legs. Taken my soul. Left me with life in hell. Everything happens for a reason. No it doesn't. Sh just happens sometimes. Live laugh love. Each die. Die but die. If you can't handle me at my worst then you don't deserve me at my best. Basically emotionally manipulating people to live with your sh because you may give them something better someday. Highly recommend considering breaking off these kind of people from your life. I prefer the one. If you can't handle me at my worst, I don't blame you. That chess ridiculous. If you can't handle me at my worst, damn same. I can't either. Translation. I will make absolutely zero effort to regulate my emotions. Translation. Deal with it orged foe. I wanna host a barbecue called if you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve me at my breast. Always follow your heart. The heart isn't always logical and can be pretty damn naive. What does not kill you makes you stronger. Statistically that which almost kills you leaves you weaker. With PTSD and medical bills. On a brighter note, whatever kills you makes you dead. It may not make you stronger, but it will ache when it's humid and make a clicking noise for the rest of your life. You have met my shoulder, knee and back I see. Time heals all wounds. No, not all, at least not in one lifetime. For some wounds, they never heal. Just only dulled, they may not heal, but they can scar over pretty well. Sometimes, that's enough. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. As long as you are alive, you are capable of learning. That phrase isn't a proverb about learning it's a proverb about being stubborn. It most certainly is not, and I refuse to be convinced otherwise. Don't judge a book by its cover. That cover has one damn job and it's to convey to me what is in the book so I don't have to read all 600 pages to know if it was my cookbook or Harry Potter. So true f those books and I like to look at the cover art though it should be don't judge an album by its cover because that would be more accurate. You never know. Sometimes you do. Follow your heart. Oh yeah. My heart's kinda super dumb sometimes. Whenever I hear this I think of a quote from a NASA astronaut. I can't remember which one though. The astronaut was part of an experiment where they had to wear glasses that flipped their vision vertically. After three days their brains compensated and started to see things the right way up despite the glasses. They took the glasses off and everything was inverted and took three days to correct. He later went on to say don't trust your brain. It can't tell which way is up. Don't trust your heart. If it stops once it will kill you. Instead, 
Trust your anal sphincter, it can tell the difference between a solid, a liquid and a gas and it always gives a sh. It can sometimes tell the difference between a solid, liquid and a gas. Fixed it. Since this man has never played the Russian roulette, my older friend gave me some advice about getting old he said don't trust a fart or waste a boner so must have been a young NASA guy, that's the second dumbest organ I could possibly follow, listen to your heart, then use your brain to decide what to do about what your heart's saying, emotion without reason is dangerous, but reason without emotion is often even worse, my partner puts it let your heart be the sail but your head be the rudder, who it is most of the time. Especially when it comes to dating and relationships. Not bullsh but wrong. People always seem to say I could care less but it's supposed to be I couldn't care less. Anytime someone says I could care less I say then why don't you? There are no dumb questions. I like the reason why this quote exists though. It's better to ask for clarification instead of being quiet out of fear of looking stupid. There sure are dumb questions. But it's dumber to not ask potentially become less dumb. You're dumb when you ask, you'll remain dumb if you don't ask. There are no stupid questions, only stupid people. There are no stupid questions, only stupid people. Asking questions. I've told this story before on Reddit. People usually like and it's relevant to this saying. Back when I was in the military I was in a pretty long a rigorous course. And there was one dude that was such a goofball. We will call him Tony. Super funny. Good dude. But goddamn did he ask a lot of dumb questions. He could easily wait until after class to ask another student or just whisper to the guy right next to him. Nah, he'd launch his hand straight into the air every 5 to 10 minutes it seems. Promptly interrupting whatever training we were receiving. Finally one of our instructors snapped. Jesus Christ Tony, why do you ask so many effing stupid questions? Tony just smirked and replied. So I don't do something effing stupid, sergeant. We all lost it, including every other instructor besides the one who was actually pissed off with him. He was fuming lol. Tony Fine boomed him. It doesn't matter who started it. Blood is thicker than water. F that. If your family sucks, leave them and find good friends instead. Honey is thicker than blood. So leave your family for a beekeeper. Rome wasn't built in a day. People often forget the whole quote. Or just don't know it as I never hear it. Rome wasn't built in a day. But they were laying bricks every hour. Positive vibes only. This phrase can make depressed folks feeling lonely. Invalidated in their suffering. The consequences are often dangerous. This phrase prevents folks who are suffering to talk about their mental illness. Being depressed or frustrated is not negative. We are humans and life is not always full of sunshine and daisies. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money doesn't buy happiness. But it does allow you to suffer in comfort John Cleese. I think there's one major dividing line. Being able to afford housing, or owning a house, and all basic necessities, food, transport, health services, education, plus having a retirement plan, a solid emergency fund and some spare cash for holidays. If you're above that line, you can easily focus on the other parts of life that can't be necessarily bought with money. If you're below that line. You will always be worried about money because if your kid crashes your car or you need major surgery, you are absolutely screwed, let alone if you get cancer or your house burns down. So yeah, money doesn't bring happiness, but it removes the basic worries in exactly 100% of the cases. Money doesn't buy happiness, but poverty does buy misery. Happy wife happy life, that's how you end up bitter and resentful. Happy spouse happy house. That way both parties share responsibility. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. This quote was originally a promotional slogan. Data actually suggests that people who eat a healthy sizable breakfast have an overall lower BMI than those who eat large lunches dinners. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps it's literally impossible and that's the point lol. I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. Causing me to fly upward. I can't stop and the air is getting thin. Send help. There's someone for everyone. Even if there is, the probability they live anywhere near you is rather low. Imagine if it was on some sort of civilization or paradox interactive style ledger after you die. HMM. Number of breaths breathed. Gallons of cum spilled. Volume of hair ever grown oh look. I had a soul mate. I wonder who it was. Just for an average old's too high expectations for love having midwestern dude. 
that girl I decided to not ask out, that cousin I avoided cause she was weirdly hot, my ex-wife, nah, she's a bee, oh well, let's find out, click, your assigned soulmate was, Tana, a woman of the aggressively isolationist peoples of the North Sentinel Island, huh.